your story is being created anyway. The question is, are you going to be the author? Are you going to be holding the pen? And are you going to be proud because you know, hey, I created that. Welcome to the Net and Sarah Show, where we aim to touch, move, and inspire you every single week. Really? We're really going to introduce our own show? Maybe we should leave it to the pro. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. One second, ladies. Here we go. Sarah Maxwell and Natalie Cook are experts in visualization and deliberate use of the law of attraction. As dynamic world athletes representing Canada and Australia in beach volleyball, they honed in on achievement at the highest level. Winning an Olympic gold medal on her home beach of Bondi is a pinnacle example. Their powerful techniques transmute the spiritual to the tangible, allowing thousands of their community members to bring their vision boards to life. Recently, they've taken their expertise on the road as the full-time family, where they inspire, coach, and lead people to create their unique, deliberate family life using a simplified three-step process. Welcome to the Nat and Sarah Show. Join us for twice-weekly episodes. Each week, Nat and Sarah will teach us how to deliberately create results in all areas of life using their unique three-step process. Not only that, they'll also sit down with some of their favorite high achievers who have manifested what most merely dream about. Are you a member of the community? Go to bit.ly slash The Nat and Sarah Show to download your three-step journal to follow along with each workshop-style teaching episode and get ready to take action on your inspirations. Hey, dreamers. Hey, last week we spoke about dream time. We spoke about finding time for you to go back to your childhood and really start to dream again. No doubt when you were little, there were big dreams you had that maybe now you've given up on. We were really stoking those dreams and allowing you time to sit, lay down, stand there and just dream. And then how do we find a way for you to live those dreams, Sarah? So the conversation continued with Irene Miller, a team leader over hundreds of thousands of people and yet she's an Italian nonna and she brought us her um, incredible story of her journey where she basically went from nothing to living in an Italian villa with her husband in Tuscany. There's a story worth hearing about. So hopefully you printed out the worksheets as we said in the beginning of last episode and listened to the bonus guided dreamtime meditation at least three times jotted down some ideas on your worksheet and now have chosen one of those dreams that we can work with today. So if you're listening to this and this is the very first episode that you're being exposed to the Canadian accent, the Australian, and you're thinking, seriously, I can't even listen to this and I have to go do homework first. Look, you don't have to, but here's where you get the most value because what we're going to introduce is step one. And the pre-step was what you needed in order to really activate step one. So what we recommend is, yeah, you actually do. You stop this one and you go back and you listen to the previous episode. So for those of you that are on track and you're ready to roll, step one is create your own life story. So first and foremost, go to bit.ly slash The Nat and Sarah Show and get your worksheets from the file selection the file section, not selection, and let's go. Because here's the context. Why do I really love Create Your Own Life Story so much? And I really want to share with you a quick story. Um, And this story is something that impacted my life forever. And it was when I was a Canadian beach volleyball player, which feels like a lifetime ago now. But there was a day where I put on a bikini every single day. And Every day that I was out on the sand, I had a dream for my life. And that dream was to be in the Olympic Games and to win a gold medal. And that seemed like a really far cry from the struggling athlete who was in the qualification and was trying to like battle her way just to get into the main draw of a tournament. So here's where life starts to take its twists and turns. I got invited to a gold medal experience, which which was to move my life to Australia, where I could train with my beach volleyball partner and start to really train 
like a pro. But here's the thing. My results weren't quite there yet. So here I was training like I wanted to be a pro, thinking I was doing everything to be a pro, and yet my results just weren't there. And I lived with that gap each and every day until I got this little tidbit about creating your own life story. And the, the irony of it is it's not rocket science. It's not the biggest thing in the world. However, most people either don't know about it or just don't do it. So for me, I hadn't known about it. So this story of me writing my, my, my story for my life rather than allowing my life to live me began. And I penned a paper just like we're going to teach you today. I did that process. And you know, I think it took me about an hour. And that hour had me go literally from number 34 in the world that I was at the time to number seven. And one of the things for me about going to the Olympics was about being top 10 in the world. That was a big goal of mine. And so for me, this is this step one is really vital if you want to live a different life, if you want to live your dreams. So I'm really passionate about this because it was the single most impactful thing to change the results of my life. So Nat said to me, I was like, Nat, we need to tell them the science of this stuff. Because guess what? Guess who told me about Create Your Own Life Story? Whoop, it, whoop. Yeah, it was Nat. But does she know why? No. So we had to go investigate and figure it out. And she says, oh my gosh, you need to talk about that stuff. Yeah, because I'm everyone out there that loves the science, this bit's for you. For me, if it's going to work, I just do it. Well, I'm the one with a biopsychology degree, so I guess I'm the one that liked the neuroscience of it all. So here's where it gets really fascinating. We are constantly telling ourselves stories. This is how the drama of our lives begins. And we have a three-year-old daughter, and we are watching it manifest and exist straight away. It's sort of this amazing um, event that occurs when we start to tell ourselves stories. And we all have stories. They're the narratives we construct to make sense of why we are the way we are. So this narrative starts pretty early. And what's really going on is that an event happens. Literally, if you imagine it like circles, there's a circle of what happened, and then there's the circle of what we make it mean. And these are two different entities, but yet we collapse them onto each other. And we do it so instantaneously that we forget that there, there's even a third domain existing there. So the third domain is once we see that our stories are merely an interpretation, which means that there are two distinct things. There's the what happens and there's the what we make it mean. There's two distinct things. Once we see that interpretation, possibility arises as a third domain. And possibility is where we create our new life story from. This is the deliberate action that we take in order to create our life the way we want it to be rather than the way it's always playing itself out. So most of us have our life being quite unconscious. So there's these unconscious patterns playing out our life. So the way that I look at it is it's like life is living us instead of us living our life. So that's a little bit of the, the nuts and bolts or the, the science of creating your own story. So what is the story, right? The story is what we make it mean or what we make up about our dream. So once we choose a dream, we then create a story around it. And often it's as simple as the positive story. And as you, because that's how a dream starts, right? It's always positive. It's always something exciting that you want to do. We head out along the path and something doesn't go to plan. And then it becomes a negative possibility or a negative story we give it meaning and they collapse upon each other and poof there goes the dream right so part of what we're going to create in our story is an I am statement because this is part of the power anything in your story that has I am in front of it is what's going to be the driver of your story it is really two of the most powerful words in the English dictionary. I am powerful. I am intelligent. I am sexy. Whatever. Can I just, can I just, can, like. What happened? You interrupted I know, me. I, I, I am know, sexy. That's but not... I am sexy, but most people say I want to be. So that's, that, I just want to show you 
like people the contrast between what you're saying about I am sexy versus I want to be sexy or yeah. yeah so that creates what you said before Sarah about the gap yeah I want to be keeps it in front of you at arm's distance your whole life right the I am statement is about bringing it into you and inside your being as you walk through life so whatever it is you want to be do have and you can choose one little thing as you're listening to us right now and put I am in front of it. I am intelligent. I am powerful. I am funny. And that, as you start to live that, you can become that. Is that how you got funny? Yeah. I said I am funny every single day and then you, one day you wake up, funny. And you know the worst thing is that she then convinces me to give her the I am funny. You know, then I start repeating your I am statements and reinforcing it even more. I know. That's how it works. It's like <laughs> hypnosis. you got to repeat, repeat, repeat. <laughs> okay. So do you want to say anything more about I am statements? Not yet. Oh, my gosh. Back to me then. So, okay. So how do we really do this thing? So like I said, it isn't rocket science, but the power in this is in the doing, is actually pen to paper making it happen. Now, Nat told me I'm going to freak everybody out by this, but I really encourage you to envision three pages. Okay. So, so Nat says, I'm going to scare off all the bullet point people. I'm a is, bullet point person. So if you're a bullet point person, just stay with this. Three pages of bullet points. <laughs> just kidding. Um, but really the reason why I say three pages is because it's sort of like there's a warm up, then there's like the middle bit, and then there's the end. And it really does have an energy to it. So three pages is just so that you give yourself the time to actually get into it. You create it one paragraph at a time. And it's not a book. It's not this perfection thing. It's like the start gives you the middle and gives you the end. Okay? So all those things are really important. And I'm just loving this background noise of the garage opening behind me. But you know what? We're real people, real life, and this is happening. So that's what you're hearing in the background. So this story that you're going to write is, this is the most important thing. And this is what Nat was alluding to. You want to write it as if it's already happened or as if it's happening now. So let me get that more clear. I want you to write your own life story or your new life story as if it's happening now. So some language examples are, so, you know, when the conversation continues, when we talk to Irene Miller, she was talking about um, the dream that she had about living in Tuscany. So her life story was about, I am living in Tuscany and I, um, like she had the ground, the red dirt in her hand and she was smelling it. Like she was right there smelling the dirt, really living inside the feelings of being right there in Tuscany in that Italian little village. And look, that's where she lives right now. But when she started creating her own life story, she didn't live there yet. So that's the really important part when, when you have the language. And this is the thing that challenged me the most when I was writing my story. Because I am writing my story about being in the top 10 in the world and competing against these teams and, and really like living within like as if it was happening now and my true reality at the time was I was number 34 in the world so the reason why I say the three pages needs a bit of a warm-up the whole first paragraph for me was fighting that inner demon that little voice that said are you kidding yourself right now you are delusional what are people going to think of you if you if they could even read this well guess what no one's going to read this this is yours this is your private entity that's going to change your life so this is why I really encourage you to sit down for three pages, but realize that it's kind of like it, it takes a little bit to get used to living or acting as if. So the yeah, other can thing. Can I interrupt there, yes, Sarah? Please. So, so I am a gold medalist, and we'll hear a little bit more about that later. Became, I started becoming a gold medalist in 1998. I am a gold medalist. For two years, I would say it, all day, every day. And I did not become an official gold medalist in the history book when we at reality caught up with my story for another two years. So that's just a little bit more about the story. And half of your brain for a long time is going to say those things like, who are mm -hmm. you kidding? Mm -hmm. 
half your brain, if not more, maybe three quarters, maybe 90% of your brain will not believe. And belief is a huge part of this whole process as well that we'll get into a little bit deeper in the future. But let's tell them, guess what the definition of belief is? And this is why we want to do a whole series on belief. Belief is merely a thought that you keep thinking. So your beliefs are more malleable than you think. And so people's commitments to reality, like my commitment to being 34 in the world, and that was a reality, and that was the what's now, was a belief, was a thought that I kept thinking. And therefore, it was literally living itself. Like I was demonstrating that thought in the real world. So, And if you elaborate on the thought, you keep thinking, it's the story you keep writing mm. or the story you keep reciting mm. that becomes your life. Boom. That's huge. Because, you know, earlier we talked about the science. Like stories are happen happening constantly and consistently. So the question is, are you at the helm of them? Because they're always happening. It's just a matter of whether you take hold of them and grab them and say, hey, I want to live from a place of possibility versus a place of pattern versus mm. a place of repetition because that's just the pattern that you've always been living. So, And is someone else writing your story? Mm. Are you writing it with someone else holding your pen? Mm. Then this is uh, so powerful. Yeah, so the good thing is that we have the garage door now closing. So we had it opening and closing. So there's two elements to um, this family life we have running all around us. And so we got clear in our three pages that we want the language to be as if it's happening now. But something else to really look at is toward motivated language. So an example, oftentimes we write our new story in reaction to the way things have always been rather than okay got it so I don't want to be stressed out okay that's what I don't want so if I don't want to be stressed what do I want to be what's the opposite of stressed and so most people um, you know we're used to saying not stressed but I want you to find a word that is not a don't want but rather what you do want because you know the science of language says that in this um, attraction-based model for living, our brains don't actually even see the don't. It just hears the word stress. So you want to introduce words that lead you towards something, that attract you, almost like two magnets. You know, you want to magnetize toward the words that you're using in your story. Because you are going to be you are like being really deliberate now in creating your own story. So you want these words to be really powerful if you're going to magnetize toward them. And inspiring words, dynamic words. So not just I want a good life. It's like I want a most awesome or most excellent life. Words that are going to really, when, when you see them on the paper and read them out aloud, just immerse themselves into your body. And so, you know, don't be too hard on yourself. You do want this to flow. Feel free to go back and... and manipulate it a little bit later in order for it to get more and more exciting once you get used to the process and realize no one is going to be looking over your shoulder reading it it's just you and you so here's a big debate we had okay so now Nat and I were pretty clear on this whole process of creating your own story but what do you do once it's written so this is our little debate so we're talking about should you repeat the story and that was a definite yeah <laughs> Repetition is the mother of all skill. So Nat was like, of course, they have to repeat it. They have to pull out little parts so that they can repeat it daily. And this is something she did on her, you know, her gold medal journey. So there's total value. So it got me to thinking, you know, a lot of experts um, actually say that repeating it is like saying, like questioning every single day whether it's going to come to pass. So here's what I reckon is really going on. Nat and I are completely on the same page because repetition is all about the energy in which you do it. So here's some examples, like three examples. So if you reread your new life story and every time you feel a sense of anticipation, excited expectancy, then you're in the right track. You're in the right vein there. So you want to be repeating in that way, in that energy. But if you read it and there's a sense of longing or even like 
mild disappointment that it hasn't happened yet, then repeating it is not a worthy exercise for you right now because rather you're reinforcing the gap between where you are and where you want to be. And that is not what the the energy of the repetition that Nat's talking about. Or perhaps, yeah. yeah I Well, then you've got another one. Read the third one. Sorry, <laughs> okay. interrupting. Organized thinker. So now if you, if you read it out. That was a dig on me, by the way. Organized. Uh, disorganized thinker. Yes, that's what couples do, right? Over time, little digs at each other. Not good. Um, number three, though, if you read it out, a sen- if you read your story out of a sense of obligation. Now, this is, this is a personal one because this is how I can do it sometimes. If you read it out of a sense of obligation or a have to, then this is actually reinforcing the idea that you don't actually believe in what, you're, you, what you've created. And you're trying to prove your way to its result. So I'm not sure if I've explained that fully because I was trying to really describe the energy of it. But I know this one intimately because I am a very disciplined person. So I do a lot of things out of I should, I must, or Sarah, the Sarah Nat show told me I should do it this way. And like, so you start to just do it without any, hmm, what's the word, like any engagement or commitment. So there's a sense of, well, here's what it actually is. If I don't do it, if I don't repeat it, maybe it's not going to happen. That's probably the energy that I, when I'm in repetition mode, it's like, oh my gosh, I have to keep doing it. So I basically get attached. And the minute you're attached, you, you kind of like a stranglehold on the possibility. You like, kind of like when you <laughs> love your hamster too much and you squeeze it because you love it so much, and then you look down and it's blue because you killed it. So this is what can happen. <laughs> you got that from the voice. I know I did. That's Voice Australia was talking about that. But it's Don't like kill the hamster. But you can do that with your dreams a little bit. You you kind of like try to control them, so you stifle them and you limit their potential. So if that's the way you're reading it, guess what? You're human. You're like me. Yay. So that's been a real learning for me is – becoming aware of what energy I'm bringing to it. And so some days it's better that I don't repeat it because that is like, that is not helping. Just yeah. like, does that make if sense? If you're not in the right state, put right state. it down and go away and get yourself in the right state. So when I, as Sarah talks about this, and in hindsight I think about the gold medal story, I'm a gold medalist that we had um, for two years, Right. Our success coach, Kira Kashi, would tell us that we can only read it when we get in like a peak gold medal winning state. So the only way for me to be allowed to even read my gold medal story was to be a gold medalist and be on top of the podium and woohoo and get into that energy so that I really felt it. I really felt that it was possible. I felt that it was becoming. I felt that I was living it. And the days where practice was hard, I had a lot of self-doubt because that that still happens, then I wouldn't read it or I would go away and do something completely different to get myself into state. Nothing volleyball related. Maybe go and drive a go-kart. Maybe watch some TV, go go to the movies or do something to feel better about myself to then go and reread my story. So what you're saying, Sarah, makes perfect sense. Mm -hmm. In hindsight, I did only read it when I was in a peak physical, mental, emotional state, Mm. which kept layering it in my body like it was going to happen. Beautiful. And, you know, as we speak to you today, we have a choice because this is an audio recording. And yes, it's available um, on YouTube as well. But this audio, you know, we could be sitting down, we could be laying in bed for all you know, as we do this. But no, we say no, we want to be standing up. We're moving around, you know, because for us, that's, the energy that we want to bring to you all when we talk about things that we're so passionate about. And we're passionate about them, yes, for us, but to be honest, we're passionate about them for you. So we stand up, we have our shoulders back, you know, our heads are up, our posture's there, and literally posture. We have posture in how we're talking to you today. So I wanted to give you an example of a rampage of someone creating their own story. Now, of course, it's easier to do your own. But I love rampages because that means that I get to live inside the dream 
of someone else. So I'm going to borrow someone's dream. I don't even know why I picked this one, but I know a lot of families with young kids um, have dreams about taking the whole family on a trip to Disneyland. So I was like, okay. So imagine if that's you, and it doesn't have to be you, but this is just an example of a rampage around a new life story. So you want to be using that kind of language, like as if it's happening now. So here you are, and you, you might be, okay, so here's an example. So as I sit, sipping a cup of coffee, reflecting on yesterday when we were at Disneyland, and as we entered the park, I looked over at my youngest child's face, and I could just see speechless. Like, my child's never speechless, but as I looked at her, I could just see that all her dreams were coming true in that moment. And I knew that it had been worth it. It had been worth all the effort to get here, to make this dream possible for our family. The flights, the travel, the, the change in school schedule, every single thing we did for that moment to see my child literally speechless, living completely in the moment of this dream. Because I know, and I know at that moment that the dreams of my child's life were expanding because of my willingness to be deliberate about my life. And Disneyland never looked better. Yes, there was characters, and yes, there was games, and yes, there was things for the kids to do, but for me, that moment symbolized why it's worth dreaming. And I've never felt more fulfilled in my life and more with more anticipation about what could come next. So that story is just a small little snippet of how you can start to warm yourself up to really being in that moment. And in that one, I was reflecting on yesterday being at Disneyland. But yet I was there with that cup of coffee relishing because, you know, even as an athlete, after I would win a very, you know, maybe an unexpected game or I remember winning one of my first international tournaments, my favorite moment wasn't actually, you know, the last point in winning. It was that moment that night we were we were in Italy and we were laying down on the beach with looking up at the stars and I was just sitting there going we did it there's just something so great about relishing in the achievement or accomplishment of living something that you deliberately created so that's pretty cool <laughs> looking at the stars I still do that 18 years on after winning an Olympic gold medal and the whole thing is we did it. And the trip to Disneyland, I don't know if you know, Sarah, but Disneyland was one of my first dreams ever. Mm -hmm. And so Sarah and I will definitely be taking our daughter Jordan to Disneyland to meet well, I Mickey. just scripted it, didn't I? That's right, to meet <laughs> Mickey Mouse. Um, so I have gone through my mother-in-law's cupboards. Because we're in Canada right now. Yeah, thankfully, because I don't travel with my book, my book called Go Girl, An Inspiring Journey from Bronze to Gold. Because in 1996, we won a bronze. And in Sydney 2000, we won the gold medal in beach volleyball. And I wrote this book, um, ironically, before we won the gold medal. That's a bit of a different story. But what I want to share with you is a script that was written that I would read every day. And like we talked about, in the energy of already being the gold medalist. What page is it on? Page number 70. Let's see who the keeners are that will be on yeah, page so on script with you. When they get their book, you'll know exactly where to go. So it goes like this. I'm a gold medalist. I'm a champion. I have fun always because a positive attitude gives me access to passion, courage, balance, respect, and all of the other universal powers that a champion uses. As a champion, I promise to always participate at 100% of my potential from the beginning of the tournament to the end. I appreciate that each member of the team always contributes 50% to the results of the team and that without the support and participation of my team member, I would not have the opportunities I have now. I always work together with my teammates towards accomplishing our goals. I am the master and creator of my universe and I am responsible for peaking when it's time to peak. I here and now commit to doing what is necessary to achieve success. I am a champion. My partner is a champion. We inspire and empower each other 
to be the best we can possibly be. We set our own standard. When my partner does something great, I'm happy and I'm inspired to greatness because I know that together, at our best, no one in the world can stand in our way. This is what I believe. This is what I know. I am a champion. I am a gold medalist. Woo! Boom. Awesome. Gosh. So that was written. How many years ago? So that's. 20 years ago. Yeah, two years It was before. recited for two years in that energy and probably in another five or six octaves above that in the bikini, jumping around the room sometimes. But you get the picture. I don't know. This just has me thinking that I really believe that there are some champions that never write this script like Nat did. However, there is just something so refreshing about deliberately creating the result. It doesn't mean the, the law of attraction is happening. Whether you write that script or whether you create your own story, however, being deliberate about it, there's just something so tasty about what you created because you did it deliberately. Yeah, and, and in that script, there are some themes. Clearly, uh, teamwork, partnership was important, being courageous, having a balanced life, being great, being inspired. So there were themes that we talked about to keep us on track because we knew what it would take. Everybody that trains for an Olympic Games works hard. Everybody does the volleyball skill, the fitness skill. They're all out there training. But it's the bond in beach volleyball between the partnership that's really important. And that's what Kerry and I worked on a lot. All right, so enough about us. Now it's time to block out some time in your diary over the next four days. Do not compromise your time for cultivating your dreams. So I really encourage you to literally take a highlighter, block it out. If it's on the computer, block it out and don't allow anything to get in the way of you sitting down with a cup of tea and writing your new life story. So make sure to tune in to The Conversation Continues with Rob Nixon because here's a real living entrepreneur who continues to create his own life story. This will give you any encouragement that you might be lacking after hearing this conversation. And maybe it's our weekly lives at bit.ly slash The Nat and Sarah Show that will really allow you to give yourself the time required to paragraph by paragraph or bullet point by bullet point if you're not and create your own life story. Because here's what I want to say is your story is being created anyway. The question is, are you going to be the author? Are you going to be holding the pen? And are you going to be proud because you know, hey, I created that. Thank you so much for listening to the show. Don't forget to join the community at bit.ly slash the Nat and Sarah show to download your three-step journal and participate in weekly lives found only in our private group. Hold on, hold on, hold on. You've got to rate and review the show. And I know all the podcasts are always asking this. And in the past, I wasn't doing it. And the reason I wasn't doing it is because I actually didn't know how to do it. So open your podcast player and click on our show from your library, not the listen now. That's where I was going wrong in the past. So now that you know how to do it, when you go there, make sure you give us a five-star review. Five stars, five stars, five stars. And then click on write a review link to actually write a review so that you can tell other people that we're legit and even funny, maybe a bit serious. So if you want to recommend this to someone, you have to put your fingers on the keys and send us a review. Thanks.